and welcome everybody. This is the Kievert Community Meeting, uh, July 21st, 2021. And on the agenda, we've got a couple items by Daniel Hiller, so I'll turn it over to you, sir. Hi, everyone. Um, we had an issue last weekend on uh, tests uh, suddenly not being executed due to PR that got merged. And um, yeah, therefore, we added a sanity check, a small sanity check that where, in which we check that tests are executed on the E2E days, just for your heads up. If you see some more error um, that you can directly make sense of, probably this could be it. Um, on the next item, um, this is uh, that we wanted to have some uh, better security for the GitHub webhooks that we need. Um, that we need to install for each repo or each organization that is onboarded on Prowl. And this is uh, now managed by our um, um, deployment uh, where we uh, re, uh, reorganized uh, the onboarding for every repo that is working with Prowl so that it is managed by us. So that the people who are onboarding don't have to bother with manually um, updating um, uh, GitHub workbooks, uh, repo secrets, and so on. OK, that's it for me. All right, thanks. Any, anybody have any questions or comments on that? All right, well, we didn't have anything else on the agenda today. So is there anything anybody would like to bring up before we move to the open floor? meeting. All right, Alex, uh, you have a note, so I'll turn it over to you. You see that you're unmuted, but we're not hearing you, sir. All right, well, while Alex sorts out his audio, um, I will move on to the next item, which just a quick note for myself. Uh, I'm sure people saw Chris's note uh, yesterday that he's going to be out for a bit. Um, that will include probably the All Things Open Conference. Uh, I can give that uh, presentation myself. That's not a problem. Uh, we will, however, unfortunately need to cancel the booth because we just will not have the coverage for that. Um, so that's unfortunate, but it's just how things probably are at this point. Um, and Alex, are you able to speak yet? Is this on? Yes, now you're there. How are you doing, sir? Perfect. I, I, I don't know. I was using the wrong device. So um, basically, my um, issue slash question is, um, in CDI, we got a PR for adding uh, ARM builds to CDI. Um, and you know, the PR looks fine, I can merge it, but I don't have any links to actually make builds or I you know, tests or anything like that. So I'm not quite sure what to do with it. I noticed Kubevert um, has something there and I just need a little bit of help with it to you know, get it over the finish line because I do want to support ARM. So, and, you know, somebody help me is basically the question. Daniel, are you aware of, do we have ARM nodes that we're using on the Kubert side then? So I, that's, a, that's news to me. I didn't know we had that. I, I, it's not that. periodic where it, it's uh, uh, running a single test on some node somewhere. I'm not quite, I'm not understanding what's going on. So that's why I need help. I think Federico um, um, added the, this, this ARM node to the cluster. I don't know if he's here. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, it, it was this was a note provided by uh, by ARM uh, themselves. Uh, it was uh, Howard from from ARM that uh, yeah he he had this node and we have some code um, that executes cube spray and creates a, a cluster for uh, with uh, our single node cluster in this uh, ARM node. And then we we use in, instead of adding it to the to the um, 
Prow workloads uh, cluster so that they are, they are it is connected to to Prow the same as we do with our uh, workloads. Given that this is a a single node cluster, maybe it is not always available, and this can uh, create a havoc with uh, with um, uh, the Prow controller manager and Plank and so on. Instead of that, we are using Kubert CI external provider. And we are executing these uh, periodic uh, jobs uh, that uh, uh, Alexander mentioned. In, in the, the, there is a single periodic lane that executes currently just uh, deploys uh, Kubert and executes one test. There's work in progress to extend the coverage, um, but yeah, this is what we have now. So, could I use something similar? I'm I'm just trying Absolutely. to sort of figure out what I can do here. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like the PR, I want to merge it, but you know, I do want to have some testing and, and some builds out of it. Otherwise there's no no sense in merging it. Yeah. We have we have in the in the secrets available to, to all the builds, we have the cube config for this uh, ARM cluster. Um, and yeah, I think it could be could be used. We we should uh, ask before um, Howard because yeah, this is something provided by by ARM. But uh, but I think they they would be very very happy to use it for 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 this extended extended uh, uh, testing. But yeah, we should ask him. And for the for setting up the periodic, it should be pretty similar to what we have. I can I can send you the. A link to the, to for you to take a look at the at the job. Um, the I, I already looked look at the job, um, so I, oh, I, right. I saw it was there. I, I just wanted to um, you know, figure out what I should do to to extend CEI to also use it and who I should talk to. That's basically you know, what I'm asking here. Yeah, if if you are using, I, I I don't know about how how testing is done in CDI, but if you are using something uh, or with Qubit CI, um, yes. then it, yeah, and then it should be only using the uh, external Qubit CI external provider and pointing it to the to this ARM uh, uh, cluster should be should be enough. Uh, okay. But yeah, is Roman Roman is here? Maybe he can he can confirm. I see. Sorry, I was distracted for a moment. Could you repeat? Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, um, Alexander is asking for running the CDI test also on ARM or some part of the of the of the CDI test. I think that given that uh, he's using Qubit CI for testing, we could do the same as we do in, in Qubit, like using just using this Qubit CI external provider, and and that should be it, right. Yeah, I think it's possible. Um, I guess we just have to keep in mind that we can only run one job at a time there. Mm, so exactly. uh, this is a general limitation which we have right now. But yeah, technically there is no issue to expect. Mm -hmm. given, given that these are going to be periodics, we can schedule them with uh, care so that they don't overlap. So yeah, that should be OK. Yeah. So. When we use periodics, uh, yeah, it's not a problem. If we could th talk about pre-submits, we probably have to rethink what to do with that. That sounds good, yeah. OK. I'll, I'll, I'll follow up with Federico to figure yeah, out exactly. all the, the details. Sure. Federico, for my own uh, curiosity, we'll take this offline, but I'm curious how or what the specs of this ARM node are that we have. Uh, but again, that's that's my own selfish agenda, so no need to discuss it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't have it from off the top of my head, but yeah, I, I'll take a look and give you give you the specs. Thank you. All right, that is the end of our agenda and open floor. Unless anybody has any thoughts before we move on to other tasks that we have this week. Hello, this is Fabian. I still need to open the. Uh... On the shared doc, let me do that for a second. So one thing that I wanted to bring up is, let me find the community meeting doc. Oh, there it is. Um, is um, our V1 release, right? Um, so um, let me get to the agenda. Sorry for, I was also surprised. 
that we got there so quickly to the end of the agenda. Um, V1. So um, two things. V1 actually an incubator. So on uh, on the one hand side, um, on the one hand side, right? We would like to creep forward to get uh, to the incubating level and CNCF. Um, and we need to, to meet some criteria there. And um, I know there are a few folks are working on this. Um, and why does V1 relate to it? Because once Kubernetes is getting to the incubator, then we can benefit from, uh, from the um, marketing support of CNCF, right? And I would like to piggyback this support, right? So that means I would like to go to V1 after, after we went to the incubator. And there's now a cyclic deep because then, right, if we go, to, if we are in the incubator and we go to V1, then we can have like, you know, CNCF will, will help us to, you know, provide marketing material, tweet about it, and I don't know, possibly even help with a press release and such. So that's something that can help us. Um, why is V1 relevant here is because if we want to move to the uh, incubator, then we know that to the TOC, to the CNF, CNCF TOC, um our roadmap is interesting and that is where v1 comes in so i would actually like to pick up the discussion that david started in february of this year uh, he started a doc a roadmap and he did a kubert summit session on it kubert to let me the roadmap to v1 was it called that like that kubert let me see if i find it i had it open let me see and um, so what, what do I need? Let me see, is David actually here? He is. Um, and uh, so I want to start tracking the things we want to for we want um, a little bit more actively. And I did something today. And um, I also wanted to look at the doc. So let me pull it up. Um, where is it? Ah, version one planning, not V1, but version one planning. It's this doc here, and I'm putting it into the shared doc. That's funny. Just a second. Duh, bad enough. That's good. Um, now I can chip it. That's funny. Um, so we've got the V1 planning. And what I did earlier today is I started to create a milestone in GitHub. And issues for everything that we've so far planned for version one according to this document. And the milestone that I created is this one, v1 milestone, this one here. And um, what feedback I want is to see right now is um, when I look through the doc, right, I see that some of this stuff is done, like we moved our API to v1 already, that's great. Non-root VM iPods, I need to pick up, up at some point later. But for example, for persistent container disk volumes, um, I know that we discussed it, but I'm not seeing that we made any significant process forward in order to meet that requirement. Yeah, that one Wait, specifically I... got uh, kind of knacked, I would say. So yeah, there's been a discussion. Uh, we'd have to link to that discussion and say why it's not on the list anymore. Hey, Fabian, I don't, uh, actually, this is directed to David, you own the document. That uh, document that we just shared in the, uh, the shared document is not appear to be shared with the uh, Google group. So I don't know oh. if it's going to be available to everybody. Really? It should be, right? It's public. I mean, it's like, yeah, it was. Yeah, it's, it's Keeper Dev. Yes, Keeper Dev, exactly. I apologize. I missed it. Sorry. Go on. Maybe you, everyone has like three Google accounts, probably. So <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I always sign up with the wrong one. It gets me. That is why Google has three billion users, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Um, so yeah, I, I would like to see if we can move it forward or you know work out a path for for this requirement um, specifically. And by the way, David, we we also have the discussion. Oh, I was with, I think, with Alicia about NBD. I want, yeah, maybe we can drive that forward and maybe we can come up with some ideas. Um, about the other... what? You, you like said part of a topic, but then. 
Yeah, I didn't want to derail. Actually, okay. <laughs> I, I hold. I hold. I'm holding myself back. This um, is because... internal dialogue we're hearing. Okay, got it. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm thinking out loud. Um, the other thing is like the established predictable community releases and support patterns, and I think sp there there's some there's some uh, sinkholes here um, or traps, right? Like um, for example, I think. Stable branches and such, right? What what do we call stable? I think we can't adopt the Kubernetes pattern here. What you're saying, like we, we we support the last two releases, we see that in the community, like specifically Red Hat, where I'm coming from, um, they would like to to support very much all the releases, and we need to come up with with a process, right, or defined way of how we define stable branches and what that actually means, who owns responsibilities. So we also need to drive this element forward. Well, we've defined it today. It's more of, do we want to revise it, I think. So mm -hmm. that's been um, explicitly, and we're talking about the release branching and what's supported that we, we very clearly, well. Yeah, I, I, yeah, okay, yeah, the fair, fair point, David. I think we need to revise it a little bit more. Like, you know, I think the, the example from a few weeks ago when Ryan backported like that, I think was like a performance fix to, I don't know, 10 branches or so. We should see if that's feasible because, right, if we if we take this example, we Ryan backported it like one by one, right, reverse in reverse order to the to the, to other branches, and others just cherry pick patches to to other branches, then we get like a very sketchy picture, right, because every branch has different fixes, and that is problematic. So, in my opinion, right, from a from a project that um, is giving guarantees like we are, or I think we should be giving. Uh, so I would like to revise that a little bit more uh, to have a crystal clear statement about this, right? And um, yeah, Vern launcher updates, we did that. And um, ba -ba -ba network building that was also done and revive, review and revise user guide. I know that something happened there. I still think it needs, needs some attention. But the last one is templating mechanism for VMs. First, I wonder if it should be called templating mechanism. Um, but in general, we are also making progress here. One question that comes to my mind is, and now I'm getting back to the top. So all of this, I think, is more or less straightforward. And all the work we need to do there is also quite overseeable. I think specifically like the, the formal stuff, right? What support processes do we want? to have or grant, to me, that is like most discussion, the area of most discussion and persistent continuous might be difficult. But uh, I would like to bring up something that is to me important. And I want to understand why we settled with this as it currently is with the non-root VMI pods. And um, my problem with the, with the um, state that is linked here right now is that it's linking to a uh, to a PR, which is only making it optional, right? But I'm not seeing it captured here that we say by default, we should be running um, VMs with non-root and totally unprivileged. So no, you know, privileged not used and no additional capabilities, which would be important to me, because I think in the end, one, one important aspect to me from Kubernetes, we are just a pod, right? And pods by default don't have any of these features unless the workload is really needing it. And uh, I wonder where we want to set the bar in, in that area. And I'm asking because it, it, it requires some foundational work, right, to get us there, uh, which has an impact on the timeline. So we don't need to solve all of this today, but um, yeah, we, we should be driving it forward. Otherwise, I also don't see that we make progress, which is like um, clear. Thoughts, comments, remarks? We're pretty close. I think it would also be uh, wise for this milestone to add the things that we've completed if, if they aren't already there, uh, just to show the progress we've made, um, if that's important to the, the incubator thing. And, I, and also, I think that uh, going to V1 after incubation is kind of neat. Um, because then it gives us a path, I think, to GA as well, like the next yeah. milestone uh, being GA. So it gives us kind of a stepping stone to every every part of the um, graduation process. 
Yeah. What? So I'll be gone for two weeks. But what I would propose is actually to to take each of the items which are currently open on the milestone twenty, which is now uh, V one, and actually put them on the agenda in the four uh, upcoming four uh, or six calls, right? In four consecutive calls. To look at them one by one and to communicate that upfront so that the interested community members can join and that we maybe take like 20 30 minutes on every call to to just discuss these topics to simply make some progress there so that is what i'm i'm planning okay that works so we, you're actually going to how to say we will carve out some uh, portion of the top level agenda for this particular topic then that works yeah, we can do it like at the end so that anybody else who's not interested can drop. But um, I would take the opportunity to to start soaking through it. And what I would encourage everybody as well is to think about are there other things that we really need for V1? Or, you know, why do we need these elements for V1? Uh, to think about that as well. Yeah. All right. That was my talk. Thank you. If uh, there's no further thoughts on that, I will issue uh, one more call for more topics to bring up. Okay. And with that, then, uh, is there anybody that has any pull requests that they are uh, focused on and need help or attention on for some reason? Fabian, I don't know where the mute button is in Zoom, so... Oh, know. yeah, my, my bad. My Apologies. And no noise cancellation. That's really bad. It, it re-unmuted you, by the way. There you go. <laughs> All right, so I did not hear a call for pull requests. Anybody? Quiet week, man. Crazy. All right, looking back at the mailing list, then, we had a few topics over the course of the last week. Let's see if anything... Uh, we know about the CI issue uh, that came up uh, late last week. There did not appear to be any fallout from that, thankfully, because um, we did do a quick review. Has anybody, have we seen any uh, test instability as a result of that that we would observe? That's probably directed mostly at Federica. Not that, that that I know. All seems to be uh, well. We have uh, some unstable lanes and so on, but nothing related to to this issue. Oh, great! We really lucked out with that one. That could have. Uh, no. Uh, congratulations to the reviewers then for doing their due diligence and not letting um, bogus code through. So, great. And thanks to you for the very quick reaction. Uh -huh. I got to give credit to Jed on that one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did that uh, pull request uh, through by proxy for him because he was the one that caught it, but he was not at his keyboard. So I, I took the uh, took the initiative there. All yeah. right. We have uh, VM status definitions. There was a bit of a conversation there. I think that's resolved. Um, VM pause and IO error. Anything to bring up on either of those topics? Okay, I think we're good there. Um, and we normally do a bug scrub. Uh, see that Fabian has dropped, so he will not be here to um, respond to the seven or so, five, five that he put in this morning. Um, we have, and I apologize, I don't believe I'm able to share my screen. Is anybody able to spearhead this if they are able to share their screen? All right. Starting from the top, I will just uh, copy the links and paste them into the chat then. Uh, so the top one, working from the top to the bottom, we have an image not found, an RBD image not found. So this is a remote block device. What are we up against here? It, that's uh, quite a wall of text. Let's see. So the, we are image not found what curve when I use a data volume cloning with smart cloning. My environment as follows. Uh, we have volume snapshot classes. We have Rook Ceph and data volume with a test DV1. Is this something that's a, 
I think we might have some people who could uh, look at this in the room. Uh, let me see. Nope, we lost them. Okay, so this sounds more kind of CDI-ish. Does anybody agree with that? All right. I don't know if we have the proper people in the room to respond to this right now. So we can look at that one again next week. Uh, templating mechanism for VMs. This was opened by Fabian. I believe it may be an RFE. Extract away API complexities from users. So something along the lines of OpenShift templates. Okay. I mean, that's uh, since it's an RFE, I don't know if there's much to respond to here in this forum. Review and revise the user guide. All right. Yeah, that's true. I have personally noticed that the information in the user guide has been slowly drifting. Um, so it might be worth a, um, oh, oh, and I see this is part of his V1 milestone. That's what we're, that's why it's important. So yeah, we yeah, probably I think everything created by, everything farming created the last three hours uh, with a milestone, like four, four issues should be, uh, should be the milestone issues. Awesome. I would imagine then that we'll be spending far more time and focus on those in the upcoming weeks. So yeah, those, yeah. I, I assume that they're going to be more forward-looking and feature sort of issues. So I will skip past them for now. We have a user cannot provide service account for a running VM. Oh no, sorry, that's one more for the uh, uh, CNCF there. So then we have Marcello says six hours ago, vert operator to configure vert handler to run more than 110 VMs per node. Ah, yeah. Okay, so there's some history here. Um, so when we first set this up, I believe 110 is the default for, um, for the number of pods that a node can run as a cube or Kubernetes default. And so we had picked that as the number of VMs as well. Uh, and we do have a response. And so, yes, this is something you can do from the Kubert custom resource, I believe. Does anybody call me out on that? Uh, uh, again, again, what? Well, go ahead, Kevin. No, I, I, I didn't understand what to ask. Sorry. Okay. So uh, back in the day, the vert launcher binary itself does have a flag that you can add to the runtime that will configure the number of nodes. I think, and this is where I'm a little fuzzy, is that we do expose that to the kubevert custom resource. So it is something that you could configure for your cluster to do. You can do it. It's, it's a little awkward. So they're doing it with a patch, which we support. Um, yeah, maybe we should increase the default and also expose this as an explicit tunable on the kubevert CR as well. So it's a it's a property, it's like a CLI argument to uh, vert handler for how many KVM devices it exposes or as resources, and that limits how many uh, virtual machines you can run. So we would want to expose something on the kubevert CR saying VMs per node something like that, and then have uh, Vert Handle automatically pick that up. But today, the escape hatch is that somebody can create a patch, which uh, modifies that CLI argument. Agreed. I believe, yeah. Um, as far as changing the default, I would stick with whatever uh, Kubernetes is using for its default number of pods. Um, yeah, it's, this is it's a still 110, default. I think. It is still 110? Yeah, uh, Marcelo mentioned that first you had to get it past when it is because it only allows 110 pods per VM uh, per node, and then he hit the keyboard limit next. Got it. Okay. He, yeah, I do see that. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah, it's exactly what David said is we just simply need to do the legwork to make this not so painful to, to configure. Um, in the meantime, there is hopefully a workaround for him. Uh, I think as David said, we can probably patch. So I think we should be good from a uh, response. Isn't it a device plugin? No. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. it's the device plugin for the KVM devices. Yes, exactly. It's the number of KVM devices. That is where we. So, right. Yeah, I'll just, I just. I didn't know that we can patch that. But yeah. 
I'm sorry, I didn't make out what you said, Vladek. I said that I didn't know that we can patch whatever uh, device plugin exposes. I think because it's actually a, a command line argument, if we patched the uh, the command that we actually run, then that would do it. Yeah, and the GitHub issue, he, he uh, puts in a patch and he's adding additional properties to word handler and apparently word handler then yeah, runs with that. VMs are unprivileged workloads. This is seven hours ago. Is this also for V1? Let's see. Doesn't have a milestone. It does not have a milestone. Um, I think what we're, what he, he's pointing out I think this is actually a request that it should be unprivileged, right? Or is it? So I, mean, I know that uh, Lubo had just uh, got a PR merge to make this the case. Yeah, part of it is that the bird needs to be run as non root, and the Cerebus account story we have above that I think is in the milestone. So this is forward looking oh. either way at this point. So it's in a different milestone, but yeah. yeah. All right. Now we have a re replaced dead stress binary with new maintained stress NG. We had talked about that. I uh, gosh, have we talked about this in this forum? I forget if we brought it up last week. It has been done already. I mean, it has been done. Yes, we did talk about this last week. Okay, great. So. That's still open, so I'm surprised if it's been merged, we should probably close. We do have it merged, all right. According to the issue, there is one PR remaining for Kubert CI, but the Kubert one is merged. Got it, okay, that makes sense. All right, Ryan Hollacy has a few here. Um, now we're getting to the five days ago. I think we're still, we would not have discussed these last week. So we've got a go routine count and memory remains high after VMIs are removed. Hmm. Yeah, we we mentioned uh, we discovered that in uh, Marcel's scale test and just talked about it in the last scale meeting. Um, see. The picture is very small, but uh, if you scroll in there on the go routines, you see that he scales up VMs, scales them down again, but the uh, number of go routines still increases over time, which is a bad sign. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is. Um... Wow. Okay. Good to know. So quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's a big deal. So <laughs> it should return back to nominal levels. Yeah. Okay. And lost track where we are. Work queue performance also by Ryan. So uh, it sounds like this is another scale test issue. Hmm. Work queue latency increases for lots of VMs. Yeah. That's a very small number to be seeing eight second delays. 10 VMIs. I think we'll we'll probably discuss all of those in the in the scale meeting again. Okay. Um, if they're six scale, then okay. Yeah, I do see the six scale in all of them. So that is every issue. It doesn't look like. I mean, we've got a couple things that are kind of worthy of attention. But um, anything else anybody would like to bring up on that topic? All right. Anything else to cover at all today? Okay, well, thanks everybody, and uh, see you next week. Thanks for running the meeting of silence. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Have a nice Thank day. You.